America, my name is Ayumi Osei Frimpong, and this week we're going to talk about a little bit of Athens news at UGA. But like I said, if I do my job right, this goes for any place that's pretty much a lot of black generational poverty and white generational wealth. So any place that black people, there are a lot of them and they don't have a lot of money, and anywhere there's a lot of white people who do have a lot of money, this will work, which is a lot of places in these United States. Okay, that's the part I was yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, so like, I'm talking about Columbia, Gainesville, pretty much Mobile, most of the country. Mill, anywhere you'll find a large congregation of black people, you'll oh, find they'll that, be that's the qualify. That's the hard qualifier. Yeah, well, yeah, they'll they'll be surrounded by a large congregation of white people whose grandparents got rich off of them. But let's uh, let's talk about UGA. Speaking of white people getting rich off of black people, <laughs> we're talking about UGA football. Um, so baseball. Oh, well, baseball and football. Oh, this happened at a football, football too. Game. This happened at a football game. At the the last the the UGA has got oh, a very right. good that's football right. players, very good football team. Um, apparently, across the NCAA, uh, black players are about 60, uh, 50, 60 percent of the players, and three percent of the students. I like to point out that every year, right before the homecoming game, you go in on UGA football like we got security here. <laughs> I'm just Every saying, year. there's a lot of money <laughs> passed around this town by black people smashing into each other. Not enough of that money goes to black people. We're going to talk about that. But we're going to talk about what happened at the last UGA football game because apparently one of our Bulldogs got really excited about one of our new quarterbacks. We have a new quarterback, a guy named Fields. Apparently he's very good at his job. And one of the UGA fans, the students wanted them to put Fields back in because they liked seeing Fields throw that football. And he was yelling in the, scre- in the, in the, in the stands, Stay. screaming in the stands, adamantly, put that Negro in. Put that Negro in. Except he did not use the word Negro. He used the other national word. <laughs> so what happened was he was yelling it, drinking beers and yelling it because he just wanted to see... That guy. Not just because. Just because. He yelled for a lot of reasons. Oh, <laughs> uh, it felt good. Oh, uh, so he, he was yelling it and drinking his beer and yelling it and drinking his beer. And Georgia won, so everyone thought it was okay. Except we have some eloquent sisters in this house. Um, one of the people, like, hey, tell me she's small, so nobody saw her. Um, she's uh, in the stands. Yes. I, I just. A, a young lady came in uh, while I was doing paperwork yesterday in the courthouse and applied for her uh, carry permit. Yeah. And so you said little Harriet Tubman. I was like, oh, that, that's kind I of wonder like, if she has a no, gun no, no, now. no, no. So this, <laughs> this, this sister went home and wrote my experience at a UGA football game. Uh, her name is, I believe, Jasmine Monroe. Moro. 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 Jasmine Watt. Jasmine Watt did a job because uh, with the eloquence of her pen. Um, she told the truth about something we all know. And this guy, his name is Adam Sasser. He's not under 18, so I can just say his name, Adam Sasser. Adam Sasser is a, was a player for the baseball team who was yelling, yo, hey, or allegedly yelling, but, you know, I, I'm going to, I suspect there was. Allegedly? I don't know. I, there I mean, we're, we're still in the United States. We can say he's guilty before he's proven. <laughs> oh, no, he's white. My bad. My bad. We get it. <laughs> Allegedly, you, you were using the right word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Allegedly. Um, but I, I, since he was suspended from the baseball team for this incident, I suspect there was a preliminary investigation and he just did it. So, um, yes. We might want to hit the intro, though. Yes. So before Adam Sasser did it, he was yelling it in the stands. And the thing is, he isn't the only one. Hit the beat, Matthew. Ah, yeah. Sound good to me. Never change the ways for the world or the government. If it was the president, then I would state the facts. You leave it up to me, I paint the White House black and it'll feature in your front. All right, America. So, Adam Sasser, give me a picture of Sasser. Adam Sasser's a nice kid from. Um, Went to Greenfield High School. He went to Riverdale Plantation. Some, <laughs> no, he, no, he lives in a little. I mean, he went to high school in a little gated community that's called Plantation something. Um, they still name things after plantations here. That's how much work we haven't done. 
I don't. Buffet on MLK. <laughs> there's a that I have never seen open. I swear to God, I think it's just where the clan meets. There's every a time I see that place. buffet on MLK. Maybe is yeah. maybe where the, yeah. the clan meets. I'm just, I'm just I'll need to get a. So seat. we still name things after plantations, and then we send, still send our kids to school in places named after plantations. So um, Sasso went to this plantation school and was very good at baseball. It's a fine game. I support him playing baseball. I actually want him back on the team because it's not him. And I and I so Sasso had to, was dismissed from this team, and he wrote a tweet. Apparently apologizing. It's very all very moving. Um, because did you read the tweet? I didn't read it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. But what the just t- check the problem the is the tweet and like the whole performance of it is is steam control. And I use that word steam con- that phrase steam control because it's from a, a very nice book called Bonfire of the Vanities by Tom Wolfe. That's at least why I read it. Maybe it's before that. But it's when things get too hot. You gotta let out some steam. Or if you don't do that, the pipes explode. And nobody wants the pipes to explode. Our football team is too good, and everyone's getting paid. So we don't want the pipes control, so we just need to let out a little bit of steam. Which means, what's up? Not everybody. Not everybody. <laughs> the people who are used to getting paid are getting paid. <laughs> so, Glad to have you, Brat. <laughs> so, so they let out a little bit of steam um, by letting the baseball player go. This guy named Sasser. And Until his daddy writes a check. Well, no, Sasser does fine in this world. <laughs> Make no mistake, Sasser, uh, the Sassers of, of Riverdale Plantation, they do fine in this world. They do fine. They, the, the Plantation Sassers, they survive. <laughs> um, what I'm worried about is the illusion that Sasser is the only one. And so I was thinking, how do I show that Sasser is the only one? Oh, I can talk about the other one. John Rocker. You remember John Rocker? I know you guys remember John Rocker. He's from here. He almost went to Georgia. I did a little bit of research before the show. John Rocker, one, I didn't know he was only, he's only 43 right now, which means he's only a little bit older than I am. When, yeah. this, all, when this all hit, um, I just thought he was like an, an adult. Turns out he was a kid, but like with a lot we of We weren't opinions. that young. Uh, I was, I don't know, I was 20. No, I, 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 I think I was, I was Rocker, younger we than could 20. drink. I was... I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. I just remember. I remember he was a grown man doing wrong things, but he wasn't a grown man. He was a kid just mouthing off, but he was also a product. Now, let me now you remember John Rocker. He said all these awful things about going to New York and he didn't like New York because all these brown people and beige people. And he just likes black people he used to own and then white people he could talk to. That's all he wanted to deal with. And when everyone speaks English, he says, yes, sir. So, like, that's what John Rocker wants. That's John Rocker's America. And he goes to New York and he doesn't get that. And he just doesn't feel right. People have bad manners. It's, it's awful. So, John Rocker said that and got in all this trouble. He's like, what? I was just talking like people talk from Macon. I was talking like my school taught me to. That's a Presbyterian day school in Macon. And I was talking like I was taught at my church. And so, um, yes. Oh, is that... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I lost yeah, a bet. I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about Van Dyke. Yeah. Um, I lost a bit. So, John Rocker was being John Rocker, being the same guy he was produced to be, and he got in a lot of heat on that. He also got paid because now he's like a talk radio personality and like writes things for conservative things. No, like it pays to be white doing white guy things. Well, in yeah. Macon. Well, <laughs> Not just Macon, in these United States. So he's uh, like John Rocker is now John Rocker Live. Like John Rocker, he, his baseball arm gave out, but like he is still that guy. I think he was on Survivor. Oh, not all Major League Baseball players get on Survivor. Only the ones with a mouth like John Rocker. I mean, that's guaranteed ratings. He's going to say something inappropriate. He's going to say something inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. We can laugh. Now, these inappropriate things also get black people in jail and killed. But, you know, it's the economy. So, John Rocker, um, and I thought this at the time, because I was thinking about other things at the time. I remember kind of this. I thought this at the time, but um, he's a product. You can't just punish him and think that you've gotten the, the, the system. And this is what liberals don't understand. It's okay to talk about people as products. Most of us are products. We're like 65% product. Like, and that's, that's, 
Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. We're at least 60. We're a lot of product. And, like, maybe that product is TV. Maybe if you didn't go to TV, maybe you were homeschooled. Then um, you might be worse. You would have been better off just watching TV. <laughs> I learned a lot of things from Webster. Um, so... Yeah, so like we're a lot of it's produced. So you can't talk about John Rocker as if he's just like a bad guy. And you can't talk about Adam Sasser if they're a bad guy. We need to go and do this like anthropologists do this, do this appropriately. I am the funky academic and you are watching the Black Athenians. So what would an anthropologist do? You got to look at the structures that produce John Rocker. So John Rocker from Macon. First, give me a Presbyterian, one of the Presbyterian day school pictures. What do you got there? Um... Yeah, all right, so this is John Rocker's Presbyterian School. It's in Macon, Georgia, a little, you know, it's, 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 it's in a white flight suburb of Macon. And, um, you know, he went to a little white flight school where he learned how to not like anybody who couldn't own or who wasn't white. So... He's a product. You're a product of, like, the institutional environment. You're a product of, one, your parents, but not just your parents, the media, the media culture, which is politically controlled. You're also a product of your school, your church. Look, I change people who come into my classroom, and that means other people had changed them into what they got, <laughs> what they started to, <laughs> how I got them. They're different when they come out, but, like, it's not like they come out fully formed. Uh, when they get into college. So, like, you're a product of schools, of churches, of civic organizations, and they all have an agenda to make you a certain kind of product. And in America, that kind, and in Macon, that product is the kind of product that is very casual about punishing black people. I said before, and, and, and people don't, and now they're starting to get it, Kavanaugh is a product, the guy who's about to be the Supreme Court justice. Kavanaugh is a product of the same white women who support him becoming on, getting on the, the Supreme Court justice. Because you have to understand that he's going to be a judge, and he was a judge. He was groomed to be the kind of judge that puts black people in prison and who disproportionately uses violence without reason. And when you groom people who disproportionately use violence without reason, every now and then that guard dog bites you. <laughs> so he likes another set of white women got nipped by what they want to produce in order to keep us in control because we don't, we're not honest that this whole like blue lives matter bit and like I need a man to protect me that's not just men that's a whole lot of white women who like turning men turning their men against whatever they want to turn it against so, um, like the Blue Lives Matter crowd and the Protect Women crowd through violence isn't all men, it's also women. So, it produces Kavanaugh, because a judge is just a cop and it produces cop. And we're not, that's, just, that's just how it is. So, it produces Kavanaugh, and, but it also produces uh, guys like John Rocker and, and Adam Sasser. And... America's for the most part fine with it until like it needs to make an example out of one of them and then it does that and then you know just keeps the checks going. I like to point out yes. that if they end up with a radio show um, and endorsement deals and afterwards yeah. as and being on Survivor, you didn't punish anybody. You didn't win. <laughs> John Rocker won. John Rocker yeah. won this game. He fell up. He fell up. <laughs> I mean, white men are very good at falling up. Yes. Sean Spicer got to be on the Emmys, and liberals loved him. Everyone, every, so John Rocker is now living his life, and it's a pretty good life, I suspect. And Adam Sasser is okay. So first thing you have to understand is that when the university puts pressure on the baseball team to cut Adam Sasser loose for saying "put that Negro in" um, at the football game. It's a part of steam control because racial domination happens as an equilibrium. It's not blunt force domination. There's always going to be like pushback, but the goal as an institution is to keep the equilibrium. Just keep the equilibrium. That way you can take the, you want to be a little bit plastic. You know how they build those, those big buildings, those, those tall buildings and like the, 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 the Eiffel Tower, they build them so that they can sway a little bit at the top. They can build it because it's really windy up there. So, but if you build it rigid, it'll crumple. But if you build it so it can sway a little bit, it'll stay until like, you know, some industrious people 
plow a plane into it. So, um, <laughs> like, so, so the university is built to take, to take a little bit of sway, take a little bit of give. And, and, that's, and, and this, is what, this is what we're watching. We're watching a little bit of give um, and, and, and cutting loose the baseball player. So that's not the solution. First of all, and people are going to be surprised when I say this, I think Sasser should keep his position. The guy worked his whole life playing baseball. It's not easy being a Division I baseball player. Like, make no mistake, especially at a big school like this, it's not easy doing, being a B Division I baseball player, and he's not the only... If we, if we cut out every white guy who used the national word at UGA and every white donor who's ever used the national word, there would be no UGA. We wouldn't make payroll tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so let's stop pretending that, that Adam Sasser is, is an anomaly. I mean, let's just... He didn't um, make the word up. <laughs> it, 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 if we didn't allow somewhere. people who use that word to be coaches, UGA wouldn't even have a football team. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah. I mean, just be all like defense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I mean, and a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying I don't know that any of them. Yeah, have for sure. Yeah. But, but recreationally, yeah. I think if we look back a couple of years, not even that far, we can probably find one that has. Yeah, very yeah. likely. So. Um, so let's stop pretending that Adam Sass is the only one who uses that word and uses it with emphasis and, like, purpose. I mean, frankly, he was probably using it in a much better way than some of his peers have yeah, used it. Yeah, he was trying to get my man later that night. Time. He just wanted to see my man <laughs> throw a ball. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this wasn't the right uh, punishment for Adam Sasser. Instead, they need to put Sasser in my class, right? We are an institution of higher education at UGA. We don't punish people for how they come in. We punish people for being the quality of people. We graduate. We, we, well, we don't punish people. We should try to transform them into a better quality of people when they graduate. So Sasser came in how he came in. What we need to do is get serious about understanding that he's not the only one who comes in how he came in and making it the public institution's mission to make sure they get better as they come out. Because if you dismiss him, he sure he writes a tweet as an apology as a last ditch effort to get back on the team or get on the team next year when nobody cares. Um, but what happens is the resentment of all of his frat bros or whatever goes underground where it gets unregulated. And then, like, it's not like Sasser doesn't become your boss in 20 years anyway. You know I mean, how this works. And, it's and, and you know, that, it's <laughs> not like Sasser's uncle isn't your boss already. So now Sasser's uncle is just ticked. And none of this, none of this is good for black people except the illusion that um, justice has been done. Justice looks like using this, and I'm making NAACP of, of UGA and NAACP of Athens, and NAACP is all over the place. What you need to call for is to use this as leverage for more funding for an African American Studies Department and a Georgia cultures requirement at UGA that funnels people through the department. Yes, like this is how they got the American cultures requirement at UC Berkeley where I went. It's all the way through the UC system. And you get me picking the faculty here and setting the curriculum. It would be fantastic. I think that's all a wonderful idea. Yes. But that would imply that's what they want. No, well, that's what we should, that's the advocacy, right? That's okay. what steam, con that's the opposite of steam control, right? That's institutionalizing the, the, the black struggle for justice. That's institutionalizing the black struggle because the university's, like I said, the university is built to take some sway. It's built to outlast the institution. It's built even to outlast. It's, it'll try to get rid of me, but like I'm a hardy Negro. So like, <laughs> even, if I, even if I survive, it's built to outlast me. It's definitely built to outlast the students, right? If uh, some very plucky students come in, it just has to hold on tight. And they got walls and buildings and contracts. They just got, and, and, and they just have to hold on tight um, until the students graduate, right? And then they can just go back being, you know, the UGA that the donors like. So the only way to beat that seriously is to build your own institution within the institution. So you need an African American Studies Department and to have that be um, a requirement to funnel through. Franklin's got all sorts of requirements for the Terry Business School. You know, I mean, they're giving out Atlas Shrugs. 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 I mean, yeah, they, yeah. Can, yeah. they give it out at the Terry Business School, Atlas Shrugs. So um, 
What you need is, the goal should be more funding for an African American Studies Department to get a few more faculty members, and to make it a requirement, like Georgia cultures, where you learn all sorts of bits about Georgia history that your little Christian school might, or plantation school might have overlooked. So um, you need to go, and, and like UGA, I think you should maybe, uh, if you know anybody who's who has a hookup with the state legislature, that would be a good place to start lobbying for this Georgia cultures requirement. It's just, a Georgia, it's just to make sure, because we don't punish Adam Sasser for the person he came in at. We should be looking at ourselves for the person Adam Sasser graduates as. And that's our duty. That's the duty of responsible scholarships. And we need to take that seriously as our education mission, because you know that the other side takes it seriously as their education mission. Like, you know that. Make no mistake. Um, Adam Sasser was exactly taught, and John Rocker was exactly taught how to treat white people and how to treat black people and how to treat everyone in between. And that was part of his upbringing, that was part of his home, that was part of his school, that was part of his church. And that's what we saw, and he's not the only one, it's just, this is the kind of institution that can redress it. But instead of redressing it, we took the lazy way out and just kind of cut them loose from the baseball team. I say, put them on the baseball team, also put them in my class. Um, because it's my job to help him become the kind of person that, you know, I can be proud of, but his parents might hate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but it's for the good of the nation. So what? You're trying to get him disowned. No, I'm trying to get him disowned, but I'm trying to. I'm, trying, I'm saving his soul. I'm doing the Lord's work here. Mar um, <laughs> saying, I'm doing the Lord's work here for free. Uh, I've never met a pastor who does it for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that should be the goal. Don't. We have a structural problem. Don't let an individual solution distract you from the structural problem. We need. We we need to reeducate some of these people. And to bring them into justice. But that comes, so our force shouldn't be forcing the baseball team to cut them loose. Our force should be um, forcing the university to understand that it's not just Adam Sasser, but it's every, I teach these kids. It's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. I mean, I'm but just, it's not their fault, their products. I mean, like some of the most ostentatious ones, they like it a little bit too much. But for the most part, they're products. And we have to treat them as products and then like kind of remanufacture them into something Georgia could be proud of. Speaking of the wonderful products here in Athens, yes. did you notice that General Beauregard has a new shirt? New Ge General Beauregard. General Beauregard is one of the local bars that a few years ago got caught on their menu. They had, it, they had a margarita, a sangrita, and they also had a niggerita with watermelon, watermelon in it. So they, all, they got caught. They got caught with, uh, and it was, on their, it was on their menu. You could just go in and like, you know, General Beauregard do this. Secret, and yeah, they're, they're secret, secret they're menu. Well, now and then, well, then we asked them about it. So they got asked about it. They're like, no, it's not really on the menu. And then someone like whips out a cell phone picture of like the <laughs> menu. It <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's right here. Well, it's like, well, I guess it was. Their menu. new shirt says, make generals great again. Yeah, so if you just, um, I wanted to leverage that campaign into a campaign to make sure that Athens black community, since we're 30% of the community, got 30% of the contracts that were kind of moved around. Because you can't just say that, like, no, we let black people into bars, so we're okay now. We've made this right. We used to not let black people into bars, now we let black people in the bars. No. What you need to do is we used to not let black people in bars, now we're going to give black people 30% of all the money. You see the difference there? You see the difference just there? Just a little. So, yeah. So, and also... I, I asked around to see, like, wh wh how much money are we talking about when you're, when you're a good football team like the Georgia Bulldogs are? And the number I heard, and I believe it because last year during the Rose Bowl, I was actually in California on, on family business, and I saw it on TV. And by the time I'm seeing something on TV in California, a lot of money has changed hands. So um, I heard the number was $38 million for the playoffs. Well, that wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah, thirty-eight million dollars. I don't know how accurate or low ball, but that doesn't include what you can raise off of that, Ooh. right? So, like, you get the thirty-eight million dollars from like NCAA and, and and ESPN or whatever, but like then you get to call all your big donors and say, 
you want to keep Georgia winning? Are you tired of the winning yet? <laughs> and um, and that, that's no small amount of money. So who knows how much you can raise off of having a national champion football team. And last year, defense was all black. There are a few white people on the offense, like a, t- like a tight end and a quarterback. And then like we kind of congregated the white people on special teams. Kickers. K- kickers, like sometimes they run down and tackle the kickers. So like, so, like there are a few white people. On, but like, so pretty much... The, the team is, is, is black people making a lot of money for a lot of white people. But so $38 million, free... what you can do, let me say, what you can do with that $38 million, let me tell you what you can do with $16 million. With $16 million, you could have 38, no, I, I, my math is wrong. Uh, what's 38, what's half of 38? 19. 19. With $19 million, you can give 38 football players a half million dollar trust fund that matures when they turn 50 or matures when they turn 40. I mean, you talk about trust funds. Can we even get them health coverage? Yeah, I wouldn't mind them health coverage. But (laughs) I think think it would be pretty good if if you got, if all those players got a half million dollar trust fund that matures when they're 35 or whatever. And and maybe give two payouts. You get a quarter million dollars when you're 30 and another quarter million dollars when you're 40. Thank you. Um, I mean, because the money's out it. there. You earned it. <laughs> and, and the money's out there. It's just not getting paid to you. So I'm saying you can take half that money and actually like set up these people. Right. If they got general studies, like a half million dollars, like, and you know that's coming. And like, yeah, that could, that could stabilize a lot of people. So I'm just saying there are other things we can do with that money. So fields, if somehow you find yourself watching this, and I know you're very busy doing things and becoming the next uh, Newton, Cam Newton. But if something happens and you feel like advocating for something, this is the kind of stuff you advocate for. And hit me up. Go to the philosophy webpage. My information's there. Send me an email. We can talk. You know the sports department doesn't allow their, fo- their people to look at your page. Uh, I think <laughs> Don't he, do it from the gym. He might be an independent Negro. If someone, puts, <laughs> if someone puts fields onto this, we can talk, and I can give you like a list of things to ask for and um, make this right. Because they're going to say something like, it's okay because we cut the baseball player. No, keep the baseball player, pay the Negroes. Amen. I'm okay with Amen. Sasser playing baseball. If... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 yeah. They, they, I'm about to say your social media t- is on monitor. Well, you can, so he's got to be a little low key. Come by my <laughs> office. I'm at 120 Peabody Hall. <laughs> Peabody Hall. That's better. All right. I'm at 120. Yeah, look Peabody. out for him. My office hours on. Uh, when are my office hours? Uh, Wednesday, 1 to 2. But if you can't do it, just send me a note. I'll get there. I have a mailbox. Send me a note. I'll contact you. Shh. We'll do it like deep throat. We'll just kind of hide somewhere. And, and, go, have, go, have, go have coffee somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, not anywhere public because Field has I'll, a career to worry about. <laughs> but, um, you know, nobody has to. I say come get a fish sandwich, but a place is gone. I'm just saying you're going to have a few shots to make moves on, the, on behalf of all of the people, not just the Fields family. You might, I don't know if your parents are cool with this kind of talk. <laughs> You may not want to talk to them about it, but I will talk to you. Just kind of say that, like, if you're in this position and you have some leverage, this is a way that you can turn your juice into um, actually like community uplift for all for all of us. So, or you can um, just come get a portrait painted. Or you can just come get a portrait painted <laughs> at Broderick Flanagan Studio. By the way, this is all possible because of Broderick Flanagan Studio. I do this show every week from Broderick Flanagan Studio in the Triangle Plaza. And Broderick Flanagan is a local muralist. He's wonderful. You can put a, find a picture of Broderick and put him up. He's wonderful. Um, so if you need a mural painted, if you need a portrait painted, a family portrait painted, because like the pictures kind of look cheesy even if you get them like kind of printed at at Walgreens or whatever. So um, if you want a, an actual portrait painted, or he also does art lessons, which is cool because I've also seen him do like corporate retreats and like birthday parties and stuff where he do art lessons. He's very talented. So just hit him up at Broderick Flanagan Studio, Broderick Flanagan Studio in Athens, Georgia. Or if you need a mural painted in your backyard, he could do all of that. Broderick also runs Enlightened Media Productions, which is a very good company that hires other black companies, right? So he's a marketing firm that helps companies that have a hard time finding black-owned businesses because 
They were emerged in an arc, uh, uh, in a market that kind of had the clan scare away all of the black owned businesses. So if you're a business, or they just took them, or they just took them. So like if your business has a hard time finding a black roofer, finding a black floor guy, finding a black um, landscape guy, finding a black photographer for your wedding, and if, it, if or a black printer for your uh, programs, if you're uh, for black printing for all of your printing needs, um, you talk to Enlightened Media Productions. Roderick Flanagan at Light Media Productions, and he's kind of a matchmaker. He finds out what your business needs, and he, he knows the people in the community, and he, he uh, for a reasonable consulting fee, he makes it happen, and you get to feel better about yourself and your racist ways. <laughs> not that you have, not yet that you're an intentional racist. That's the thing with structural racism. You don't have to do it in, like, on purpose. You just have to go by the recommendations of your friends who aren't Broderick Flanagan, and that's how the economy, the white economy grows. Um, so, like, Broderick Flanagan at Enlightened Media Productions and Broderick Flanagan at um, Flanagan's Portrait Studios. So, if you ever have juice in these kind of positions, be very wary of the individual, um, the individual solution, right? The individual solution, apparently Van Dyke got... got um, What's it convicted. called? Got, got convicted today in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. It's kind of good. Honestly, I think the Burge people did it right, right? The Burge people, John Burge was uh, the uh, Chicago police chief from the 70s, and he just tortured, like, entire blocks of black people. Like, this is a, the, he led a whole ring of torturers. And wasn't and, Daly before him or after him? During. Du- oh, yeah, no. Like, they had a whole plan. Yeah, well, yeah, no. I mean, Burge was there for a long time, and they had dailies before and dailies after. There's always been oh, dailies. Right. He's like the poor. They're, they'll <laughs> always be with us. Like, they're, they're, they've always been dailies. Um, so, so Burge, like, led a rang leader of torturers, and what the Burge victims did, which is the right thing they do, the right thing to do, is they got a history of Chicago police torture curriculum into CPS schools. That's what winning looks like. That's what winning looks like. Winning doesn't look like cutting a baseball player and then, you know, the same thing happens. Winning looks like creating the conditions where it just, like, it, 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 it's neither appropriate um, to say that, and black people have money. Winning looks like Sasser growing up and just being in a sea of rich black people. That's, that's what winning looks like. So un, unless you're going for that, or at least solidly middle class black people, so unless you're going for that, any punishment isn't going to do the job. The job is community uplift. Leveraging this incident, white people being white, and whiting out, out loud, into black community uplift. Not black individual uplift, black community uplift. And you do that through um, institutionalizing the quality of political education, which means an education for, to get black people to fight for their share cut of the social goods that we deserve, um, into, the, into, into public policy, and, which includes our schools and our public institutions. That's what, and don't get distracted by the punishment. We're not, I don't, like, I'm not a vengeful man. I just want my cut. I'm not a vengeful man. Well, no, like I said, I, I want I Sasser agree. back on the team. Oh, yeah, no, I, I also want him you. in my class, and I want the university to say, you need to go into his class. And I, not just Sasser, because I don't, I don't think he's that special. That's the thing. I don't want to punish him, because I don't think he's particularly anything. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. just a basic white guy who got caught by a very industrialist and articulate young woman. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, he's just a basic white guy. And like... He spent all of his life playing baseball. Let the man play baseball. And let's take it, because we made him. We made him. We Georgians made him, and we Georgians can take it upon ourselves to fix him and his ilk, because the plantation school is cranking him out. Um, John Rocker School, the first Presbyterian of Macon, is cranking out John Rockers. They haven't stopped the winning, and they're not tired of it. They're still cranking him out. And until we make the intervention to change the curriculum to make that unsupportable, they will continue to crank them out. So add in a black studies, um, uh, a Georgia culture's requirement. I, I wouldn't mind a white studies school. Just let me run it. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> they need to learn the truth about themselves. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 They're not going to let that happen. They're not going to let that happen. Not gonna but let that happen. Um, so, yeah, you have this Georgia cultures requirement. There's an American cultures requirement over and this The American cultures requirement in California happened just for this reason. There was an incident. There was a protest. And the people made the right demands. Don't get rolled on this one, Georgians. Um, I mean, I took Georgia history, and according to Georgia history, you think they never owned slaves. Yeah. See, no, you need a Georgia culture requirement that's run by me. Because I have ideas about how that would run. And it's run by the African American Studies Department. We're a third of Georgia. So um, run by the African American Studies Department and funded with faculties. Plural. And then make it a requirement that everyone has to get funneled through it. And then that would, that would solve that problem. Or uh, what, what, the require, what they did at UC Berkeley was you could take it in different departments. So I could, talk, I could, I could teach in the business school too. It would be uh, a, a, a American culture, uh, Georgia culture like with a business focus, or Georgia culture with a history focus, or Georgia culture with a music focus, or Georgia culture with a, um, yeah, like, like, like English focus. So it all fulfilled this one requirement, but, but the requirement would have to be vetted by the committee of people like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... So that's how I want justice to be done, and I hope this was educational. You get, like, the, I, I put this out there now, and you should send this video to all, like, if you're at Texas A&M, if you're at University of Virginia, if you're at any, Clemson, any of these white schools where it's Liberty. just going to happen, like, like, what'd you say? Liberty. Liberty, <laughs> or um, what's the one? Not Clemson, U, University of South Carolina. It's, it's going to happen. It, it's going to happen. Um, have your asks ready. Because white people are going to white, and they're also going to try to set the terms of the redress. We need to set better terms. And we can, and I hope I've given you some uh, institutional ways to think about this. Also, you should ask for, if you're, if you're fields, like I said, fields, if you come in, I'll say things like, look, there are a lot of black workers at the university, but they're all working jobs that don't pay. So if you actually want to... Um, stand up for the black community and use incidents like this to stand up for the black community, you need to do something about like helping the black workers organize and, and just straight up demanding that where we congregate black people in the, at, 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 in the jobs, like in the cafeteria jobs and the janitorial jobs, um, we need to make sure those people have power in their workplace and more compensation. So like there are, there are, there are, there are moves you can make as a student with power. Um, I mean, and I they're going, and the administration's going to steer you to like the the least structurally dangerous one, which is cutting Sasser loose and saying like quietly come back to the team next year, or watch Sasser goes to the minor leagues because baseball you don't actually don't have to play college. It's not like football. He just goes to the minor leagues and and, and tries his luck there. Apparently, he's a very good hitter. So um, the Sassers of the world do fine. They don't stop becoming your boss, but because you've cut them from the team. They just have more resentment, and then their friends get more resentment, and it, nobody wins. And everybody ends up with tiki torches. Everybody ends up with, it, this all ends in tiki torches. <laughs> um, I'd rather it not be the case, but that means we need to go think in terms of structural change and a massive re-education program. Thank you for your time. I hope this has been an educational show. Look, this doesn't happen on its own. I can only do this um, with money. So thank you if you give now. But if you like what I'm doing, if you want me to continue, I had a different show planned for today. Um, but I'll just do it another time. The Sasser thing hit, and, and, and I was moved by the spirit. But if you like what I'm doing, I need you to go to thefunkyacademic.com, thefunkyacademic.com, and sign up for a $5, $15, or a $50 a month uh, donation. I'd like to, I'd like to expand in myriad ways, but I can only do that with your help. Try to provide a service here, but service costs. I have to pay rent and pay Matthew, and, 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 and things cost money. Things cost money. I'm giving you advice, and I have to read and prep, and I spend a lot of time putting all this together. I like doing it, too, because I like, like leading to the quality of cultural uplift of, of black people in the United States. I also know that white people don't get out of bed for like less than 
with what I know, like two hundred dollars an hour. So so like so like I'm just I'm just trying to like not lose money every month. So go to thefunkyacademic.com and please sign up for five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month, and I'll keep doing what I'm doing, and maybe I'll be in, be able to bring in special guests and stuff. By the way, if you're serious about this kind of curriculum that would that would actually um, make better Georgians. One book that should be in it is The Color of Money by UGA law professor Mercer Baradaran. The Color of Money. So that's my quick tip of the day. And I'll see you next week or the week after. I might find a sub for next week. But, and if you like what I'm doing, make sure to send this to all your friends, to your listservs. You know, maybe your Sunday school group should just watch this video instead. And talk about that and what Jesus would say about what I'm saying. And the same with your book club. So tell your friends, and I'll see you next week. Take care.